he called me actually yesterday and told me this <clears> is <throat> john tanagi of fifth pro boxing fans joined by dimitri salita over zoom dimitri how are you how was your new year good to connect with you i've been good new year's been okay first snow day yesterday uh so uh things are getting back on track hmm. larry as larry david would say and it's, i think it's been uh trending uh, there's a uh limitation on to when you can wish happy new year i think we're towards that end so <laughs> i'm very happy that well, we can still wish each other a happy new year <laughs> Yeah, I think if it goes any longer, we, we pass the time to say it. But, uh, Dimitri, just first of all, uh, reflect on uh, your experience in Saudi Arabia. Uh, you were there for the Day of Reckoning card. How, how did you find it? Great. Uh, had a great time. Incredible event. Great to see for the sport of boxing that so many different promoters, managers, people in the boxing community working together to make the biggest and the best fights. And... Uh, much much credit credit to the Saudis to, uh, um, to His Excellency to, uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Mr El Turkey, uh, it's fantastic fantastic event, uh, great hospitality, great fights, and uh, certainly you know feels like that trend is continuing. Other big fights are getting made that uh, uh, that, that are going to bring the sport of boxing to new heights. And I'm very excited for it as a, someone in the boxing business and also as a boxing fan. What did you make of uh, Jarrell's performance against Dubois? I think that uh, a lot of want to give a lot of credit to D Daniel Dubois and his trainer, Don Charles. They came up with a good game plan and they were able to execute it. I feel like at some point during the fight, you know, most, and myself included, felt that Dubois may fail the test and fail the the... The test of uh, the test of reckoning. When the going gets tough, he usually doesn't get going. But when the going got tough, he got going, and uh, maybe the best I've ever seen him look. I think that Jarrell, you know, hasn't had a high caliber fight in a long time, and uh, Daniel Dubois was the toughest guy he's ever fought. I, I, you know, I, and uh, it was a big stage for him. Um, he was heavier than than we'd like him to be. But I do think that he showed that he can compete at that level. And if he can get himself together and uh, get himself in shape, lose some weight and take the lessons from this fight, he could still grow and get better and come back and, and give a, a lot of guys at the top a lot of good fights. Certainly his personality uh, adds a lot of flavor, him being from the United States, from Brooklyn, New York, adds a lot of personality to the division. But he has to put together some wins against credible guys to to put some uh, meat on those bones. And what I mean by that is to, to kind of back up some of that talk. Um, and, uh, you know, he's had some challenges recently, uh, but uh, seems to be that situation is working itself out. And uh, hopefully everything will come back on board, you know, relatively soon. Yeah, uh, obviously, <clears throat> I presume you're, you're referring to uh, the fact that he was arrested uh, earlier this month uh, and charged uh he he i believe he has been released on bail uh what can you tell us and uh have you spoken to him about the situation to me true yes i spoke to him i spoke to his family um very su surprised obviously by by what happened uh, you know I, i've read the allegations i don't know Jarrell to be that to be you know the person that he's been uh, described to be in the allegations i, I don't know Jarrell to be uh, that aggressive and to do the things that he's done. I, I don't know that side of him. So I'm very surprised to, to, to have read about it. Uh, he, he, no, he, he called me actually yesterday and told me his side of the story. Uh, and uh, I can't comment on it because he has lawyers and he has, you know, a team of people that, that are kind of uh, cultivating that message at the appropriate time. But, uh, but what he told me, you know, adds a lot of context to what happened and uh uh you know and makes makes some sense in light of what i've read so uh hopefully the situation gets uh, worked out in a favorable way to everybody and Jarrell can stay a free man and stay out of jail and uh and return to uh to being the best heavyweight he could be uh which is what he's focused on and he's had a great opportunity to to 
to showcase himself, uh, you know, on a big stage. And even though it didn't go the way we wanted to go, I do believe that uh, that Jarrell Jarrell still has some fire in that tank, and will come back uh, if he chooses to take it seriously. Will come back, you know, in in, in an improved uh, way, uh, and 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 hopefully better than ever. You've uh, stuck with him uh, throughout his career, throughout uh, difficult moments. Uh, can I assume that you'll continue working with him despite uh, what's going on at the moment? So, you know, yes, I've been with Jarrell since 2010. Uh, and prior to that, he used to go to training camps with me. And um, so started working with Jarrell from the beginning of his career, uh, you know, gave him been through many ups and downs uh which uh which have been long and I was very happy for him to finally land this opportunity against Daniel Dubois something that I've worked you know after that failed drug test it was very difficult for Jarrell to find an opportunity to redeem himself on a big stage and you know many people many networks many broadcasters uh and and promoters who represent other uh, legitimate heavyweights didn't want to work with him I mean Eddie Hearn one of the guys that has publicly said it. Uh, there were others that didn't want to work with him. So, you know, th- through persistence and creativity, we were able to to uh, finalize this opportunity for him and uh, get him a career high payday and a fight versus a guy that he should have, uh, could have won. Should have, maybe not should have, but could have won. It was a fight that I feel that Jarrell, you know, if he was in better shape, and maybe 30, 40 pounds lighter is a fight that he could have won. So I feel that I've, you know, delivered on my on my um, responsibility to him as a promoter uh, through the ups and downs. And, you know, very, I don't want to say surprised, but disappointed personally that Jarrell, you know, he, he has his ups and downs. Sometimes he loves me, sometimes he hates me. But when he, you know, when, when, when he hates me and he says these things that are very, disparaging and very hurtful and uh you know and uh you know and and make people assume certain things about me a lot of it has to do i want to be you know a lot of it has to do because i choose to wear this i choose to be publicly open as a jewish person and there's a lot of anti-semitism uh that's unprovoked and um uh that relates to me look at the you know if you look at every interview uh, that I do, or most interviews that I do, there's someone commenting something that's, uh, you know, that's that's anti-Semitic and and uh, and negative. Uh, but I do want people to know that I choose to wear this. Uh, I don't wear a hat. I don't uh, hide who I am. And I'm very grateful for it. Uh, and uh, uh, and I've feel that I've done a great job for Jarrell and for all the fighters that I represent. And uh, um, and uh, I, I came. My family immigrated to the United States from the Soviet Union uh, for to the Western world for freedom and opportunity. And through hard work and dedication, uh, you're able to be openly who you are and achieve those goals. And I um, am working hard. I did so as a fighter through my life, and now as a, someone in the boxing business. Uh, working in that direction. Mm. Um, you mentioned uh, disparaging comments uh, that Jarrell may have made during his career against you. Obviously, we saw uh, at that press conference, <clears throat> excuse me, in Saudi Arabia, him uh, direct some comments towards you. Uh, what is the relationship at the moment? It, did you have a conversation maybe after the fight about certain things he said? Because he, he did say uh, comments like you claimed you asked him for five million uh, because of uh, losses from the AJ fight or the AJ fight getting cancelled, uh, obviously you know you you have a right to respond to that. So, you yeah. know, what, what can you tell me? So, I'll go in order of your questions. After the fight, you know, I came back to see how Jarrell was doing, and he gave me a hug, and uh, you know, and, and our relationship and our and our friendship of of uh, many years, uh, you know, in those type of situations. I think that it cut through a lot of the the BSness and and the untruthfulness that that kind of lingers around. So uh, we had a good conversation, and we've been speaking 
after the fight, you know, on a regular basis, certainly, you know, uh, before and uh, after this incident. I just want to give a little bit of a background to my relationship with Jarrell. So I had Jarrell since the beginning of my career, beginning of my promotional career. I think he's actually the first fighter that I signed. And uh, eventually we progressed him to fight on Showtime and a Showbox. And eventually he's fought on Showbox uh, as the main event. And uh, uh, after his his uh, good performance, uh, uh, it was a fight in Rochester, New York. You know, Jarrell and some members of his team called me and said, "Dimitri, Jarrell don't want to be with you no more. You know, we got other, we got bigger and better opportunities." So I said, "Okay." I said, "But we have a contract, and the contract is a promise from one party to another to to deliver, and I've delivered, over delivered." And, uh, you know, I don't think that it's a valid request. And then I've had literally pretty much every promoter in the industry at that time, this is like 2015, 16, uh, reach out to me, get legal, get, you know, try to intimidate me in different ways to, to get to work with Jarrell because people thought, who is this new young kid, an immigrant, um, and he has like well, the best American heavyweight, one of the best American heavyweights. Let's, that's easy picking. And so I've, I've uh, hired the best lawyers that money could buy because I was fighting against uh, some of the most, most established boxing businesses in the industry that have been around for decades, that have been around longer, longer than, I'm, than I'm alive. And, um, and I won uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, um, this is like 2016, 17, and I won, and I won that that uh, uh, that legal altercation, and so after that, so that we so that Jarrell and I are on the same page, I, and on the same side of the table, we did a deal where Jarrell is my co-promoter. So every dollar, every cent, every ticket, every flight, every hotel room that comes in. Jarrell knows about and is a, and 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 is the greater partner in it. He's the greater you know earner on that distribution from everything that comes in, and that contract was uh, 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 registered with the that contract and that settlement was registered with the New York State Court and with a judge, and uh, uh, and we started working, you know, by that deal from that point on. And then Eddie Hearn came to the United States, was coming to the United States, and I was thinking to myself, what is the best way to align Jarrell, whether it was Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua? And I felt that Jarrell had a lot more chance and to beat Anthony Joshua and, and would get a lot more money for it. So, so uh, you know, we aligned ourselves with Matchroom and with HBO at that time, and we promoted the first two shows for Eddie uh, in the United States and aligned them to fight Anthony Joshua. And... Uh, you know, Jarrell again started to to act up, you know, and 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 didn't honor our deal. Um, and again, Jarrell made career high paydays, and they were supposed to fight Anthony Joshua for uh, uh, you know for a life changing money and a life changing opportunity because I think that Jarrell uh, had had the ability to, to win that night against Anthony Joshua. And I do want to say about Anthony Joshua, you know, I've had several guys fight him, and he's a great guy. And a great sportsman, and um, I, I have a lot of respect and admiration for him as a boxing fan. So yeah, so so then Jarrell failed the drug test, uh, unfortunately, and that was a breach of our contract. So immediately, there is a process, uh, legal process, because the our deal was uh, 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 Looked after by the new by this by this uh, New York State judge court, uh, based on our settlement. Then we did a deal with Top Ring and ESPN, and unfortunately, Jarrell failed the drug test again the following year, uh, and then he's been off for a significant amount of time, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, then we brought him back. We paid for a couple of fights to bring him back on other people's shows. One was in Argentina. One was in in the Midwest. Then he fought Lucas Brown, finally a decent fight in Dubai, where he made a couple of bucks, and uh, got ordered to fight Manuel Char. The thing with Manuel Char was that there was 
no platform and no 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 way to put that fight together because of you know because of uh, what people thought about Jarrell, I think. And then through hard work and communication and luck, you know, we got an opportunity to fight this fight in uh, Saudi Arabia on December twenty third, which was an incredible opportunity because immediately Jarrell inserted himself in the elite heavyweight division, you know, uh, and made a career high payday, uh, which I'm very happy about. Uh, and he knew how much money he was getting paid all the way through and kept Jarrell, you know, informed about the process. So to hear him say these things the week of the fight, it's like, it's mind boggling. It's like, it's, 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 uh, I, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's someone close to him, you know, but, and it's, it's supposed to be, again, a, a week of celebration for the work that we've done together to get to this point. But, uh, but it wasn't, it was challenging. And uh, some of his friends and his family that were there in, in, uh, in Saudi came up to me and apologized and said, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so the bottom line is that we're, 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 you know, we're, seems to be that it's what under the bridge and, uh, uh, you know, and we're, we're talking and talking in a constructive way to f figure out how to deal with the situation that he's had last week. And hopefully, uh, you know, sometime in the not too distant future, a way to get back into the ring. Mm. So, <clears throat> excuse me, just on, uh, the boxing side of things, have, did you have any conversations with regards to whether he could fight again in Saudi Arabia after after last time? Well, immediately after that fight, I do believe that there was, well, I believe, and I had some conversations with, uh, with Spencer Brown about about having him come back. There was interest to have him come back, yes, uh, but uh, haven't spoken to anybody since you know since last week. Mm. And uh, just away from Jarrell, uh, Joshua's next fight was announced against Francis yeah. Ngannou. What's, what's your thoughts on that, Dimitri? I think it's a great fight. It's a great event. I believe that Joshua, you know, uh, absent of Deontay Wilder, which was supposed to be a super fight, uh, he, uh, it's the best move that he can make. And if Jarrell had been victorious, I believe that Jarrell would have been in play or could have been next um, because of obviously their history and the, you know, Jarrell's personality and, and all, and all that. But mm. the fight with Ngannou is fantastic. I love to see it. There's obviously questions, but uh, um, I think Joshua looks sensational. It's the best I've seen him look in a long, long time. And, uh, uh, and it's, it's an exciting time for the heavyweight division.